Hop it in, everybody. I'm Jason Salas with KUAM News, and I have the great and distinct pleasure of interviewing a very dear friend of mine who I've not admittedly heard from in some time, Arlene Santasteffi. And she, of course, is a Arlene, your, your job title seems to get longer and longer and longer every time I talk to you. And you're well known as a cultural ethnographer, a historian. And now you've actually done a original film, which covers a pretty wide variety of, uh, of topics. It's under the, the, the auspice of politics, but you're actually um, you're debuting the first segment on that very soon, correct? That's correct. We're releasing it's a it's a three and thirty three hour thirty five minute video documentary, uh, a tribute to Paul McDonald Calvo. Uh, it was commissioned by his children and um, Calvo Enterprises Inc. Mm -hmm. And it took five years to complete it. Um, it also it is partitioned into three partitions. I'm sorry, but I'm outside and there's motorcycles passing. No problem. That's that's what we're doing now. This is the world we live in these days. So, you know, it's and that, that actually I think that would be a testament to your your commitment to actually telling stories is, you know, like what, whatever it takes to tell the story. Right. Well, you know, even if you're windblown. Yes, yeah, stories are not easy to get. Um, and then with Governor Calvo, Governor Paul McDonald Calvo, he's not one to talk a lot about what he does. He prefers, I don't know if he prefers other people do it, but he just doesn't. And so it was a painstaking effort, but I kept reminding him, Governor, it's important for people to hear it from your mouth, from your perspective. And so he was, he was very welcoming and, and very accommodating. But the meat of the story, I think, comes from everyone else that was interviewed to be able to augment what Governor Calvo um, shared in the personal interviews that I conducted with him over, mm -hmm. I think it was over two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious, um, obviously, as, as a documentarian of human experience, you know a lot about uh, Governor Calvo, one of the most beloved governors in our island's history. You know, he, he was prior to uh, prior to Joe Atta. So that was at a time when the island had, um, you know, it was a time of great prosperity. Uh, is there anything that you personally learned about Governor Calvo from doing this research and you know, interacting with him and, and the people for your film? Thank you for asking that, uh, Jason. At the time that Governor Calvo ran for governor in 79, he served until 82. The prosperity actually came in during Governor Joseph Atta's period, but Governor Calvo did a lot of made a lot of decisions that impacted and empowered what happened in the ADA administration. And I, I mean, we know it's, it's very difficult when you have a governor, lieutenant governor, especially the way our system has it. You know, they don't always agree, right? But Governor Calvo and Lieutenant Governor Joseph ADA were magnanimous men. And I really, respect that now that I've spent enough time with both of them. Governor, Lieutenant Governor Joseph Ada had nothing but praise about Paul Calvo because of, the, because of the character of that man. Now, you know, they had their political differences when whenever the governor would leave and, and Lieutenant Governor Ada would become the acting governor. Of course, you know, you're absent. And the guy that stays behind has to make a call. And sometimes he's not going to ask you what you want done because he's acting. So there were some strive, but overall, I think, I think that they really got along. And you have to remember that Governor Camacho was the first elected, and then uh, Paul, I mean, excuse me, Ricky Berdalio mm -hmm. um, served after that, and then Governor Paul Calvo. And the Democrats, for many, many years, had only Ricky Berdalio. And he was a tough person to beat. And the gov Governor Paul Calvo expresses that, that you can't compare, for example, the administration of his son, Eddie, in comparison to whom he ran against or the candidates today, because no one in the Democratic Party has been formidable as Ricky Berdalio has in political history. Mm -hmm. So it was it was really wonderful. I mean, it was like, I was getting one-on-one -on -one lessons from these people, and I, that's why I'm so dedicated to oral history, because there's no distraction, and you can listen, you know, to what to what they're saying. Now, Arlene, 
Now I, I've known I've known you long enough, and I've admired your work for all of these years to know that you you are painstaking when it comes to actually organizing and setting up. You know, whether it be a book, a newspaper article, you know, a um, a letter to the editor, or in this case, a film. Um, but knowing you as I do, when you actually had like an outline of how you wanted to tell Governor Calvo's story, did you basically, after doing all your interviews and all your research, did you have to like throw that out? and put it in the trash and say, I've got so much more material now and I want to tell the story completely differently than I'd originally envisioned. Okay. First of all, it is not my story. And secondly, Good I point. never have an outline. Thirdly, I go out and I try to collect the interviews from scratch. I don't rely on anything that's there except the historical information, of course. But I allow the people that I interview to dictate the story and that's why it's so difficult. That's why it comes out different. If you cannot engage in an interview to be able to draw out who you're interviewing, your story is going to be bland. Mm -hmm. This is very historical. It is emotional. It was funny. It was reflective. It was sensitive. It was tear jerking. Oh my goodness. And I went through all that with, with them. Um, and with Governor Paul Calvo, it was matter of fact. It's history. Mm -hmm. I beat, Ricky beat me. I beat Ricky. Then he beat me again. Okay, now, of course, and we know your marketing prowess, so we don't want to give too much away because we want people to watch the film. So um, if you can now be a promoter of your, your very fine work, tell people where they can find it and when, please. Well, where else? K-U-A-M. And there, we are premiering this on Saturday, which is tomorrow. I believe it's at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The schedule is available. Marie sent it out. It will be on Channel 8 and Channel 11. It will be on cable. Um, is it GNN and Docomo? That's right. Yep. Yeah, and it will also air in the Northern Marianas. And so that gives me great pleasure because it's nice to be able to share with our region what happened here on Guam and vice versa. We, I really enjoy learning what goes on up there. My mom was born there. So I'm seeing my descent as well, but it's just nice to be able to know what your neighbors are doing, right? That's right. Well, Ar, we, we really appreciate your work. And again, this is part one of three, correct? Well, it is partition on politics. There, mm -hmm. are, there are three partitions. I don't know when the others will be released. Um, some of it is pretty personal and the kids are gonna have the kids. I say kids, they're adults. They're gonna need to come to terms with the fact that you know, that's going to be released sometime. I just don't know when. But well, for now, we can enjoy this partition. And you've always done amazing work. So we can't Thank wait you. to we can't wait to see it. And again, you've always been you've been a mentor. You've been a friend. And we appreciate the work that you do to and organize and, 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 well, Jason. and chronicle our island's great history in yet another format. So Arlene, thank you very much. Cesar Swasi. My pleasure. Thank you. All right, everybody. That was Arlene Santa Steffi once again doing fantastic work. And you can see the first partition, as she calls it politics that's going to air on KUM TV and we'll have all of the information for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please be safe and we will see you next time.